next generation small modular reactors critical next year. Our goal is by July 4th, and I think we will beat that. But you yes. have an operational uh, small modular by July next year. By July of next year. It will not be selling electricity into the grid. It will be running on federal land either at the Idaho National Laboratory. It'll be demonstrating it can sell electricity. It will be permitted by DOE, but we're working hand in hand, hand with NRC as well. So we will see commercial reactors break ground, um, actually many before then. But nuclear is going to move at a faster pace than it has before. But back What you just watched is Energy Secretary Chris Wright during his interview at the All In Summit last weekend. This was just a little one minute clip where I think he let it slip that Okla is actually going to have their first small nuclear reactor online and operational by July 4th, 2026. Why is this so important? Because if you take a look at this slide from one of my recent earnings deep dives into Okla, they aren't expecting this facility to come online until 2027, 2028. And I thought these timelines were a little quick myself. If you know the history of how hard it is to get these things online and get going, they always take longer than usual. Well, the exact opposite has just been stated. We now know that this thing is going to be operational in 2026, which is huge news that I think the market hasn't caught on to yet. Oakland has been up a little this week, but once this gets out and people understand what it means, I think we'll see the stock move even more. But even more importantly, how is this even possible? Why are we achieving these things so much faster? Well, David Freeberg asked a great question on this topic to kick off the interview. Let's take a look. I just want to give you a statistic and, and get you to respond to the future state of nuclear in this country. It's, I think, about 4,000 bucks a kilogram for enriched uranium to go into a nuclear power plant. To have a gigawatt nuclear power plant is only burning three to four million bucks. Oh, sorry, it's only burning uh, about four, uh, yeah, three to four million of electricity per day for 12,000 bucks of fuel, of uranium fuel. So the, the incredible production capacity of, of nuclear is like unmatched with any other energy source. Why does it take so long? And why does it then cost billions of dollars and you know, for when, you, when I can turn 12,000 bucks of fuel into $4 million of electricity, what's going on in the structural challenges with scalability of nuclear, particularly in the United States? And um, why is it not a real path to kind of scalable energy production in this country for us right now? I mean, it will, it will be in the long run for the reason you just said, the greatest energy density. That's the key thing. If you can get a lot out of a little, that's got, a, that's got running room. But nuclear involves something people can't see and they can't understand, and therefore it's easy to scare people about. So nuclear really has been a victim of fear in our world. It's the safest form of energy production we've ever seen for the amount of energy it's produced and the amount of negative impacts. But people think it's the scariest and the most dangerous. So if you make it very long, very bureaucratic to permit things, if you make it so that uh, Therefore, you've got to so over-design and so over-engineer everything. It's so hard to permit enrichment. So you make everything expensive and you make everything move slow. And then you have other energy sources that turn on and off and you pay people a lot to build those things. That also erodes the economics of nuclear, of something that's reliable. So we, meaning the government, has killed nuclear over the last four generations. And the goal of the Trump administration is to reverse that strangulation of nuclear and let it fly again. Wow. Let it fly again. I was a doubter about the ability to get regulatory approval to build these facilities quickly. But as Chris Wright highlighted during his presentation, they have cleared these hurdles and they are getting nuclear up and running faster than anyone expected. And as Oakla has highlighted, they have multiple other facilities that they've broken ground on. But I was a doubter the whole time that we would be able to get these things up fast enough. It is changing the story and the investment thesis for Okla. We will see real production coming online faster than expected. This is great for all of the Okla shareholders. And to put it simply, it's a buy. And we're going to see a ribbon cutting like this happening sooner than we all expected.